from the Clark Ford Studio in Oxford, Mississippi, MBW Digital proudly presents the Oxford Exxon Podcast. I'd say thanks for tuning in, but why am I going to give you a round of applause for something you're supposed to do, to be frank? And now, here are your hosts, Chase Parm. And broadcast school has really paid off. And Neil McCrady. I deserve to be on TV. edition of the Oxford Exxon Podcast. Chase Paul Neil McCready, Clark Ford Studio. This morning, a rainy day in Oxford. We are at that time of year where pretty much every day we get some sort of thunderstorm or uh, something today. Another one of those continuing on from last night and to the morning. But we're not going to talk weather today. We'll talk uh, some different sports topics, different things going on in the uh, Ole Miss universe, if you will. Ole Miss women's basketball won their first game of the season last night, 60-42 to over Norfolk State. The men get going on Saturday against Western Michigan in uh, in that one as well. And the podcast is brought to you every single day by the Oxford Exxon. Go next door to the Oxford Exxon. Go to the Oxford Crystal. Get the Maple Bourbon Shake. It is back in business there at the uh, at the Crystal. When you go to the Exxon, you can use them for uh, tailgating. Still got another one of those left with Mississippi State in a couple weeks. Daily lunch specials, bottomless refills that are only forty nine cents. You go in, you buy the Stadium Cup, forty nine cents to fill it up from that point forward. So take care of those as well as the Speed Pass Plus app, the Mobile Rewards app, and plenty more ways to save money there with Blue Sky and the Oxford Exxon. Again, coming from the Clark Ford studio. We are Clark Ford's in Amory, Mississippi, 662-257-1900. Call the number, ask for Corey Clark. Tell Corey what new Ford you're looking for. He'll send you a quote within 15 minutes and business hours. And um, you get your quote, and the rest is up to you. You decide how complicated you want to make things. You can shop that around if you'd like, certainly your prerogative. Or you can go ahead and get down to the business of getting your deal done. It won't take long because he's already at the bottom line, except for the $500 that you can save by telling him that you heard about Clark Ford on the podcast. That'll give you another $500 off that already great bottom line deal from Clark Ford and Amory. You get great service after the sale. Uh, delivery options, all of those things. Corey wants to be your car guy. He wants to be your truck guy. He'll prove it to you. 662-257-1900. Going to look at the news a little. I've got two uh, two stories that kind of crack me up a little bit. First, um, reading here, headline, man with no pants falls through a Waffle House ceiling. Um, seen that one? I have not. I know you'll be shocked here. This happened in Tuscumbia, Alabama. Oh, shocking. Probably been pretty high up on the list, honestly. Florida would have been my first guess. You still pick Florida first, even, Always. even when it has to do with the Waffle House. Well, now, I'm not a Waffle House aficionado. Okay. In fact, I don't know that I've ever eaten at a Waffle House, so I don't know. Do you make up things every day to be a little strange, like no, but I've just never eaten okay. at a Waffle House. All right. Um, I mean, I just I, that's not number one. I, I rarely carry cash. Okay. Because it's gone, and they only take cash. I think. No. Oh. No. Once I walked into a Waffle House because I was going to grab something and they didn't take cards. 1982? I don't remember. Okay. I don't know. Credit cards didn't exist at the time, so they only took cash? No, credit cards existed. Um, Anyway, I just never been. But I would have pictured Florida. Is Waffle House not big in Florida? Waffle House is fairly big most places. Okay. I didn't know. Georgia seems to be the hotbed, but I think they're in most places. Yeah, Alabama would have been probably my second guess. Police in Alabama say a man not wearing any pants fell through the roof of a Waffle House during a botched burglary and fought patrons before fleeing. The Times Daily reports to Scumbia Police Detective Wes Holland said 27-year-old Glenn Boast is being sought on criminal mischief and burglary charges. Another suspect hasn't been identified, but the police chief says the Birmingham man tried to break into the restaurant's office through the ceiling. Said Boss went into the bathroom, tied the door shut with his pants, Climbed into the ceiling. He says an underwear-clad boast then fell into the dining area and fought off patrons trying to detain him. Says when Boston fled, leaving behind pants that contained his driver's license and that, shocker, he may have been on drugs. I was going to guess that Mr. Boast perhaps was under the influence of uh, substances. That was going to be my next guess. I think that one takes the top spot in our podium today. Okay. I do have a better one, though. As everybody knows, election night last night, I, I settled in, watched a good bit of it. Um, in Nevada, in a uh, state assembly race. Okay. Okay? Okay. They, uh, they, they elected the Republican candidate. Okay. Who is not living. Oh. See this? Is he the guy that died in the brothel thing? Yeah, the owner. Yeah. A Nevada 
brothel owner and reality TV star who died last month after fashioning himself as a Donald Trump-style Republican candidate has won a heavily GOP state legislative district. Dennis Hoff defeated Democratic educator Lisa Romanoff on Tuesday in the race for Nevada's 36th Assembly District, which includes rural communities and large stretches of desert. In the southern part of the state, county officials will appoint a Republican to take his place in the seat. He was found dead October 16th after a weekend of parties involving his 72nd birthday. So he ran the, that famous the Cat House HBO show yeah, or whatever it yeah. was. Yeah. Um, the same one where Lamar Odom was found. Unconscious right. Right. There at right. One point. Right. Back when he was a Kardashian. Yeah. <laughs> right. Isn't that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that is correct. Okay. Do you not get removed from the ballot when you are dead? How does that work from a I, legislative process standpoint? I don't know whether you have time to change the ballot. I don't know. Beach, I mean, honestly, I mean, wouldn't the Republican Party once you died going, "Hey, we need somebody else on this ballot"? What do we do here? But I don't. I mean, like, what really? What All I'm right. asking, and I'm not being rhetorical here. I'm 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 asking from okay. a paperwork standpoint. All right. Is it possible to change the ballot? And get it distributed properly in time well, in, in because honesty, you've already already had absentee voting and stuff too. That's true. And in all honesty, maybe the Republicans you go as a as a party you go look, we're going to appoint someone, vote for you know what I mean. I mean almost telling your, your obviously your, your he constituents can't, he can't serve obviously yeah, so because look, he's vote for him. We're going to fix this. The Republican then gets whatever cool. I mean that might have been leading up to the days going hey just vote for this guy, vote for this guy, vote for this guy. Of course, he would not be the first politician without a pulse. I don't have a GIF available right of now. Of the right? monkey with beating the drum. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And we have these little sound effects buttons, but I don't know which one does what. Up yeah, I've there. seen that. One of them is applause. Well, if, on the thing, if you pull it up, it shows where it is. One's no, one's yes, and one's applause. Applause, yeah. I would have hit yeah. the applause button there. You would have hit the applause button there? Not really, because I don't know how it works. But Yeah, we can hit it. Yeah, yeah, it's still going. Right, good. I'm still getting applause. Stop. Okay, it's done. Now. Okay. Yeah, we won't get that again. Yeah, that's good. So, all right, that was my two things I just saw this morning. Um, did you watch a lot last night? Um, I, I watched some of it. I was interested in a handful of races around the country. Marshall Blackburn hammered the dude last yeah. night. I was curious to see that bath. one, and that was a bloodbath from the get go. Yeah. I was interested in. In the um, the Ted Cruz Beto O'Rourke yeah. race is that how you say his name Beto or Beto? I think it's Beto, but yeah. sorry if not. Either way, yeah. um, I thought that was interesting. I was interested in the the because it was so contested and Oprah Winfrey got involved. I was interested in the governor's race in Georgia, which at this hour remains uncalled. Although it appears that the Republicans going to narrowly win. The Kemp guy won. Yeah. I saw he was losing percentage points very quickly last night there at the end as uh, as Fulton and Gwinnett counties were coming in. Had a big lead, and then the percentage points started kind of dwindling late yeah. in the night. She's going to demand a recount and yeah. all that stuff. That's fine. Florida's crazy as Florida's always crazy. Yeah, Florida's insane. That was a close race. Um, I'd kept up with that a little bit because I thought both candidates were somewhat interesting, Nelson and, and the mayor of Tallahassee. Locally, Roger Wicker won easily. Uh, Cindy Hyde Smith and Mike Espy in a runoff uh, November twenty seventh for uh, for that one. So uh, as expected, yeah, as expected. Uh, I, I think Chris McDaniel even had a little poorer showing than most people expected, even though most people did expect Espy and uh, Hyde Smith to move forward in uh, in that one. So that's November twenty seventh. There was some thoughts earlier in the day that if things fell right, that could actually have some control of something when that runoff happened. However. The Republicans have held the Senate, and the Democrats the Democrats have taken over the uh, the House. I'm laughing. You'll laugh at this because uh-huh. I have a group text with Jay Tate and Gabe Diarman because we have to plan when we're taping the show today. And Jay just out of nowhere said, "Spoke to Kennedy last night. Andy's calling the Auburn opener. I think it was last it was night. Last night they beat yeah. South Al. He's scheduled to join us tomorrow on the program. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Uh, Andy covered the game." called the game last night and jay said spoke to kennedy last night and called him coach i have no idea why i hate myself <laughs> i've only done that a couple of times in my career and i cringed inside so bad when i did it that ugh. look okay we can go here we have nothing else whatever we'll talk football in a bit 
There are different connotations, however. There's the, oh my God, I'm so excited, there's whatever. And then there's sort of just the, I'm just kind of talking to you and it came out because, what, yeah. like, yeah. There's, there are two completely different connotations of the media referring to a coach as coach. I wouldn't do it every time, but if it does slip out once, it doesn't all of a sudden make you a whatever, whatever. No, whatever. no, 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 it, it doesn't. And it is a title. You're not my coach, but it is a title. It, Again, there's a difference. It is a title. Well, see, there's a lot of people. This is interesting, actually, because it's kind of a human nature thing. Because I used to be like this to start, not with a coach thing, but it's kind of taken me to get a little older, just from a respect, grow up thing, to call someone by their first name. So then if you're not willing to really call somebody a lot older than you by your first name, by their first name, what do you do? I'm not going to say Mr. Bianco. Right. So then what do I do? I think do? if you're old enough to be out there, it's Mike. I know, but just yeah. I, I, ha I have a hang-up there. Yeah. I, I, it's kind of an elder thing. I don't like saying somebody's first name unless I really know them well. Yeah. That's kind of my rule on that. I haven't done it in a – I mean, I was in my 20s the last time it probably happened. I, I, I don't think I've – I don't think I've done it. And I, there are coaches who want to be called coach. Nick Saban wants to be called coach, and other people call him Nick. And it, you can tell it bothers him. Does he really? Is that one yeah, thing? Yeah. yeah. It's one of his things. He has more things than he's. He has lots of things. Yeah. I never called Tuberville coach. Never even thought to call. I. The people I've covered, I've I've not covered that guy though that wants that. I've not consistently covered the jerk. Well, there really aren't a lot of jerks. Like when it gets down to it, most right. people there aren't are many. civil. Yeah, I, I think people covering Mullen, he tries to intimidate them a little bit. Urban Meyer definitely. Urban for sure, and probably that's where Mullen got it. I mean, he ran off people for wearing colored shirts over the course of the years. <laughs> Petrino was bad. I did cover Petrino a little bit at Auburn, and oh, he really? was bad. He was he was different cat now. That yeah. cat was a different cat. I I got a kick last night because I inadvertently uh, sparked a couple of the the Bianco haters on Twitter. So <laughs> Missouri's play in Central Arkansas last night, and uh, Gabe makes a post speaking of about. I know nothing about Central Arkansas. Scotty Pippen played there. Their colors are this. That's about all I got. Yeah. So I just responded on Twitter, and I said, well, that was the team that beat Ole Miss in a midweek in 2008 when Mike and I had our worst ever postgame for Fuffle, is what I said. Okay. And uh, I said Mike told me that I asked a, quote, horse blank question. And uh, Gabe came back and goes, well, did you? And I said, well, Probably could have phrased it a little better. But what whatever. was the question? All right, I'll tell the story in a All second. Right. So, uh, I've told it before, but there's new listeners. Well, why not? It's rainy Wednesday morning. Uh, there was a guy, though, that comes on after that and goes, I'm sure your question was fine. Somebody should have grilled him or something. Like, so I was like, <laughs> it's been 10 years. Like, it has been 10 years. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, shoot. It's like, at least you were pushing. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well... Well, what you should have done was waited till the following Monday and then ask those questions. Friday night after they beat Florida. Yeah. So, Mike, about that Tuesday game against Central Arkansas, <laughs> let's go back. Can I go back? All right, let's go. Why didn't you have a pitcher warming up in the bullpen? Well, that 2018, I mean, a quick, 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 quick history lesson here. That was a team that was like number two in the country early in the season. They were red hot. They were supposed to be very, very good. That's a team with Lance Biddle and Pomeranz on it and Biddle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like really good because Lance is a junior on this team, so he's still there too. It was the last season. Satterwhite's the year there. before I started covering. It's the no, no, no. It's the Miami year. Okay. It's the my. It's the year we all go to Coral Gables later. At gotcha. The end of the season. Gotcha. Okay. So they're ranked like number two in the country. And they lose to somebody, then have a bad weekend. And this is a team that barely got into the tournament. They had to win two SEC tournament games to even get in. They hit the home run in the walk-off against Kentucky in Hoover to even make the NCAA tournament. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Guerrero hit it at like 2.30 in the morning. I remember that. So, setting up a little bit of a climate of what's going on here at the time. And this is right after they've lost three straight Super Regionals, 05, 06, 07. Okay. And... Central Arkansas at the time is a transitional D2 to D1 team. They're not D1 yet, but they're making the move, so they come to Oxford and play a game. And Ole Miss beats them like – I mean, they beat Ole Miss 3-2 to two or something. And uh, Baseball happened. Yeah, whatever. And yeah. 
I'm just talking. It's 1030 at night. We're just whatever. Mike's in a pissy mood. He's probably going to get him on somebody about something that night anyway. Yeah. And I'm kind of new at that point. I've only been there one year or so. He, he probably wouldn't do it to me now. I you didn't have your stripes yet. Yeah, he wouldn't do it to me now. No. He'd pick out somebody else. But <laughs> I was the target that night. And I said, Mike, I, I should have said, you know, well, I'll get there because it does happen. I said, Mike, do you think y'all just kind of overlooked him tonight or something? <laughs> He looks at me, and I can see in his eyes, and I immediately want to just crawl under the base. I'm like, here we go. Oh, yeah, God. Now yeah. I got a brace for it. Yeah. What Fuse kind of, is lit. Yeah. What kind of horse crap question is that? Do you think we just roll our he- our bats and our helmets out here? And he's like, starts yelling at me. And I'm like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. He goes on and on and on and on and on. So then. Like, Dude, I didn't know. I was just asking the quote. Yeah, so I'm working for the Spirit at the time. Dan Wykey has the job I have at the time. Yeah. And he's there and he's laughing at me the whole time. <laughs> and Dan looks at Mike and I'm like, crap, he's not going to let this go, is he? So Dan looks at him and goes, Mike, I feel like, you know, basically sometimes baseball happens. You guys have a lot of energy tonight. <laughs> Yes, Dan. That's the way you ask that question. Not that horse shit way, way, but he goes at me again. Like, turns around, I'm like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Oh, God. Wookie, Wookie knew that's what was oh, going to yeah, happen. He, 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 like, looked at me and smirked before he <laughs> yeah, got going. Yeah. I'm like, oh, crap. And <laughs> as typically does, he uh, he apologized the next day. Yeah. So that's Mike's thing. But we had, yeah. a, we had a little night there. Uh, only had a few. Only, only a few times over the years. But that was the, that was the first one. And at the time, I was – Scared to death. Um, probably called him coach after that because I just want to get off the <laughs> just want to get off the mound. But but nonetheless, we have uh, figured out that midweek losses do happen in uh, in baseball from time to time, and it is what it is. So it's all good. Um, yeah, I haven't had that. I've got a couple more, but I'm not. Doing yeah, right now we'll go later. I've had some run-ins with most everybody I've ever covered. That's just I'm part shocked. of it. Yeah, but not bad. Just stuff. Tuberville got would get upset at stuff I wrote, and to his credit, he would always confront me with it, and we would have a conversation. It happens a little more with baseball and basketball because you see them, them more, and it's more intimate for whatever reason yeah. than football. Football's gotten so corporate that it's right. it's got to be something either that has been misconstrued or it's got to be something really aggressive because otherwise it just sort of all goes in the wash and out the other side. You'll you'll pick it out a whole lot more in baseball and basketball than you will football. That's what I'll always give Tuberville credit for, though. He never sent his minions out to do it. He would find you and talk to you about it. And he'd get mad, and you'd have a conversation. And it, 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 we, There were times we finished a conversation, and he would say things like, you just don't like me. And I would say, come on, man, that's not true. I, I wrote what I wrote. I'm not the reason you lost to Tennessee. You're around by... someone most every day, and you write – Hundreds of articles about them a year. Yeah, some at some point somebody's not going to agree with something. It yeah, just is what it you is. know. And 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 with Tommy, it was always kind of such a laid back relationship that it wasn't this corporate. Like you said, now it's so corporate. You're almost uncomfortable not talking to the people, but you know, like with us. And I don't know why I'm this way. I'm letting you guys in on some inside baseball here. You feel like you have a certain number of. I hate this analogy. I'm going to think of a different analogy. The old analogy would have been bullets in the chamber, and I I don't like that. Um, You just think you have a certain amount of capital, and you have to be – you have to make decisions about when you want to spend it. You know, I don't feel – I mean, I have no doubt I could text Matt Luke daily and ask a question. I don't think he'd like it. And I think after a while, it would probably, he would grow irritated with it. I guess. I don't know. He might prefer that I ask it. I don't, I don't blow up Ross Bjork's phone. I don't feel like I should. I don't feel like that's appropriate. And with some coaches, you, you know, or people that you cover, you got about three of those a year. And then when you use them, they're gone. Um, like, I think the people that cover Alabama, I don't, think they feel like they can just text Nick Saban. Hmm. They have to kind of go through the process. Yet, if you cover Avery Johnson, I think you can text him whenever. I could text Andy whenever, and I'd get a question. Yeah, most I'd get coaches kind of set that process themselves. I mean, I, I think a lot of times Mike would rather just, just contact me and let's get it over with and move on yeah. with our day. And if Andy didn't respond, I typically knew that's something he didn't want to talk about. Right. And so I'd go through the official channels or whatever. A little plausible whatnot. deniability there to keep yeah, everybody. Yeah, you know, or just whatever. 
the most passive aggressive one of these. Just got to thinking about this because Cliff, like Cliff some, Ellis. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Well, no, it's fine. Well, this is even worse than that, but it's an assistant, so it's a little different. I mean, for the most part, Mike's been good. Uh, Rob Reinstuttle, the hitting coach, for a few years there. Um, Where's he now? He was at Western Kentucky. I don't know if he still is or not. But okay. He was. He was with maybe Pulaski at Western Kentucky, if I have it right, at some point. But I had written a story basically about how I don't even remember the whole gist of it, but they weren't hitting well, and it was a story about essentially they couldn't get into plus counts, they were swinging the wrong pitches, a lot of stuff. I don't know. And he gets offended by this, but he doesn't say anything to me. All he does is when I get to my seat in the press box for the next game. There's an envelope there, Ole Miss envelope, Ole Miss baseball envelope, Ole Miss baseball letterhead. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, and when I open it up, it is sheets and sheets and sheets. Like it, it looked like an envelope, like if you got accepted into an Ivy League college. Like it is filled <laughs> with stuff, and it's just got my name on it. And it is Ole Miss's complete self scouting report. I mean, it is what they do on every count. It is what they do against every type of pitch. It is it, it is analytical stuff that people would dream about from pro football focus on a baseball level. It was everything. <laughs> and I thought, okay, you obviously have a problem with me. You apparently at the time don't like what I write. So you're giving me something that I could just publish to the world right now that I'm sure everybody has some semblance of this, but not to this level. Florida probably doesn't have exactly what your number eight guy does against curveballs and one-two counts. It'd be like the Cardinals-Astros thing if they just given permission. Yeah, they handed he handed it to a media member. And it was like, he, he thought it won the argument. He thought, well, you see that you're wrong because of this. And, and had you been a total jerk, you would have just published it. Well, and I mean, Twitter didn't exist then. It had it. You might have just take pictures of it and going, hey, here's what I got at my desk today. <laughs> You know, tweet at Dan Wykey or somebody and go, hey, did you get one of these? I got one of these. You know, I mean. Yeah, because it, it wasn't off the record. I never spoke to him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, never. People are people are crazy. Yeah, it's just like, dude, I mean, no, don't do that. No. Please stop. Don't put me in this position now where I have this. Well, that's like one of the questions in the mailbag today, which is up. It's sponsored by the Weston Jackson. I'll tell you about the Weston Jackson in a little bit. Was asking about all this internal stuff that we do deal with. With you know, what's your relationship with Matt Luke's staff, and what's your relationship with Kermit, and have they, you know? And I answered the question. Thought it's a fair question. You want to know? I, and then I, I, but at the end, I said, and this is true. I said, here's a little journalism thing. It doesn't matter. I mean, it really doesn't matter. I've covered coaches who hated me. I've covered coaches who liked me. And I've covered coaches who probably didn't know my name. Not literally, but you know what I mean. They didn't care. Mm -hmm. And it's all the same. It's the same job. Yeah. It's, it's not important. Fans and people, and I get it, outside would think that's an important thing. I, I don't think it is. I can tell, like... I watch the Cubs closely, and I can tell there are beat writers that Epstein likes, and I can tell there's a couple of beat writers that he'd probably like to put cyanide in their drink, but he still answers their questions. Yeah. We'll wrap up this conversation in a second. A couple other uh, thoughts on that, but in the meantime, go check out visitoxfordms.com, visitoxfordms.com slash events. See all the things going on inside town here this week, and uh, moving forward, the Big Bad Art Show started November 2nd. Goes through December 3rd at the Powerhouse. You've got Scrambled Art Bowl still going on 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day at Uptown Coffee through November 26th. Thacker Mountain Radio will be in front of All Square Books at uh, 5 and 6 o'clock on, uh, on Thursday. So check that out every single week. As always, at 6 o'clock there in front of uh, All Square Books for Thacker Mountain Radio. Jersey Boys coming to the Ford Center. You've got some Christmas open houses around town. You've got a lot of different things going on, including Wire Wonders Family Day, 10 to 12, at the University Museum on November 10th. So take your kids, take advantage of all the different events going on in Oxford. That's visit OxfordMS.com. As I mentioned, uh, my mailbag is up at RebelGrove.com. It's, uh, it's part of the Rivals Network, as you may know. And uh, it's sponsored by the Weston Jackson. Uh, the Weston Jackson is a fantastic hotel down in Jackson. It's great. It's, I say this with authority, it's it's easily the best hotel in, in 
the metropolitan Jackson area. It's not even close. Uh, the Weston Jackson has a soul spa. It's the ultimate luxury spa experience in downtown Jackson. Indulge in personalized massages, signature facials, soothing body treatments, and much more on their extensive spa list. Also, check out Estelle Wine Bar and Bistro. Sip on a craft cocktail or enjoy their curated wine list. It's open for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and Sunday brunch. Chef Caden's mission is to connect guests with the community through local partnerships, so gather at Estelle tonight. The uh, podcast also brought to you by Dead Soxie. We're going to tape the Dead Soxie, I should say the Soft Verbal Podcast, presented by Dead Soxie later this morning. Uh, Dead Soxie, their product is just fantastic. Chase has it. Russell has it. I've got it. I won't wear anything else. They're they're great. Uh, they're the best socks, best dress socks you will put on your feet. They're the best dress socks you'll ever wear. They're made from bamboo. They're premium socks. They stay up. They look good. They don't tear. Um, they feel great. They stay cool. Um, try them for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Go to the site, deadsoxy.com. It's a beautiful site. Shop through there for what you're looking for. We have some new offerings coming to you very soon that you'll be really interested in. Um, if you don't love them, uh, let them know. They'll send you your money back, and you can keep the socks. Um, premium socks, they stay up. Like I said, they're great. DeadSoxy.com. Enter promo code REBELGROVE at checkout, and you'll uh, you'll save 25% off your order. Podcast also brought to you by Pinnacle Trust. Pinnacle Trust, based in Madison, Mississippi, represents clients in 24 states, has advisors in three states, it was founded in 1997. Pinnacle Trust provides detailed, specialized investment management, financial planning, retirement planning for individuals and businesses, and much more. At Pinnacle Trust, investing is treated like a commodity, and decisions are made using objective information and research, not emotions. Regardless of your level of wealth, Pinnacle Trust will sit down with you, listen to your goals, study your expenses, and put forth a comprehensive, detailed financial and retirement plan. Cookie cutter financial planners put you in a box. Pinnacle Trust builds a box just for you. To learn more about Pinnacle Trust, go to Pintrust.com. That's P-I-N-N Trust.com. Mention that you heard about Pinnacle Trust on the podcast. You'll get 10% off your first year's fee. You mentioned Cliff Ellis, but there was a lot going on around the Cliff Ellis tenure at Auburn. It wasn't exactly just show up and, and write some previews and some gamers most days. I mean, it was a little wild there for a while. Yeah, it was pretty tumultuous. He hate all media? No. Really? No. There's a few. He, he hated something. everyone that covered the Chris Porter situation to any extent. Yes. Is that fair? Yes. And those of us who really dug into the Chris Porter. Not happy. Not pleased. He's wanting to squeeze your neck. Yeah. In Fayetteville. <laughs> after a game. <laughs> that was right after the Porter thing. That wouldn't happen now. I don't think. No, I don't think so. I'd be calmer about it now than I was then. I was mad then. You were more of a hothead then. I, I look back You're on that. calmer now. Yeah, I look back on that, and I think, man, that could have gone bad. Because that was in the midst of it. Porter had just been suspended. And they went up to Bud Walton and got popped. 2001, Neil, even handles the Houston Nut 11 thing differently. Uh, Yeah, probably. Yeah. I probably asked the smart-ass question that still sometimes I wish I'd asked. He didn't have any capital at, the, capital at the time. You'd have been okay. Usually you can't take a coach on like that because you lose. But there was no capital left at that point. Well, what little he had, he used at that at that moment. That's a good point. He ran his own capital out. He had one last $10 bill in his wallet, and he dropped it on the table right yeah. there. Yeah, that's fair. No, it is You know what's funny? funny? I felt that coming. I looked back on it, and when he walked into the room, he looked at me. Oh, yeah, no, the whole time it was very... Yeah, and I thought something's coming, something's coming, and here it is, boom. And they lost. Yeah. Like, had you won... Yeah, it, well, you okay. look back on it, you think, what would he have said had they won the game? Because they were up 17 to nothing. Yeah, they were up They big. were up 17 to Yeah. And I was running, it's so many, so funny. Although I, blowing the 17 nothing lead is why he was running hot, too, I'm sure. I mean... And it was Arkansas. Had it been South Carolina, for example, he wouldn't have been as worked yeah. up. That Arkansas deal was big to him. Big. You know, everybody always wants to know dynamics of coaches and media and different things. 99.9999% of the time, it's a very, very professional deal. 
And frankly, given the emotion around games, how quickly we're speaking to coaches and players after games, it's a wonder just from a human element that more things don't happen just because a lot of these coaches are coming off the worst days of their professional lives at times, answering questions about it, having to discuss it with a with a public face. I mean, you know. Well, I'll give you an example. Saturday. Yeah. It's a human element to this, too. It's one of the reasons, and I'll, I'm not going to get into Monday's thing and, and make it a big deal and turn your day into a miserable day. It's one of the reasons that Monday bothered me. Um, You want to ask the biting, hard, digging questions? Do it on Saturday. Do it after the game. Get down on the field at that level we were at and see something we saw. And don't get me wrong. Matt Luke's job is to win games. Matt Luke is he's in the scoreboard business. Matt Luke is in the scoreboard business. And Matt Luke knows it. To his everlasting credit, will be the first person to tell you, I'm in the scoreboard business. And if you don't win enough games, eventually that's that. Fair? Of course, yeah. Matt Luke's also a human being. Matt Luke is also a husband. And from all accounts, and I do mean all accounts, he is a fantastic dad. An involved dad, a loving dad, a dad who will leave work for just a few minutes to go see his son's baseball game or whatnot and then get back to work and and, and work the extra time to make up for the time lost. Matt's a hell of a guy. I'm going to be honest with you. Whether he survives as a football coach or not will be determined by a scoreboard. It will. It will be determined by a scoreboard that will start every single game with 0-0. Zero to zero. They'll put 15 minutes on the clock, they'll put four quarters on the clock, and they'll start at zero to zero, and a referee will blow a whistle, and somebody will kick a ball, and here we go. But at the end of that game on Saturday, when I guess it was Jordan Tamu's last pass fell incomplete, Mm -hmm. and South Carolina had to run the last minute off the clock. Yeah. Uh, Look, Matt's a public figure, right? This is what it is. His son, Harrison, was on the sideline. And he turned and kind of walked down the sideline in front of us, and he was crying. It was emotional. He turned and walked back and got back to his dad. My point is is that right before Matt Luke came to talk to us, he had to talk to two groups of people. His family, which included a little boy who was very upset about his dad's team losing. And he had to go talk to the players who bust their ass for him. And Matt came in, and Matt was on the cusp of some emotion, I think. Not in a bad way. He's a human being. He wants to win. He wants to win for himself. He wants to win for his family. He wants to win for those kids. He wants to win for you, the fans. And he thought the kids gave him the effort to win. The kids gave him everything. They played as hard as they could. There was no, you know, well, we we didn't show up. Because sometimes a coach comes in and he's angry at his team because they they didn't give it. That wasn't the case on Saturday. That's why, you know, when people say, why didn't y'all grill? Well, because here's here's why I don't grill right now. Because I think I know the questions to the – I know the answers to the questions on defense. We've asked them, and I think I've got the answers. And on offense, again, were there some play calls that you could question? Sure, and we did. Hey, you threw the ball in that spot. Why did you get away from the running game? It appeared to be working. And we got an answer. And with Phil Longo, to his credit, through 21 games, Phil Longo is very consistent. This is what we do. And you and I had this conversation the other day. Maybe it was Jeffrey. I don't remember. Phil Longo's done exactly what he was hired to do. He's done exactly what he was hired to do. He's come in. He's installed an offense. Hugh Freeze knew what the offense was. He ran. He's installed that offense, and he's run that offense. Saturday was one of his better games. Against an average SEC defense, he lit it up like a Christmas tree. It's one of his better SEC games. Yeah, Yeah, he lit it up like a Christmas tree. And that's why I thought that some of the grilling of him on Monday, the grilling's fine. I think the timing was off. Do it on Saturday. Come in there and do it on Saturday. Don't do it on Monday afternoon. My opinion. Others are free to disagree. And as for the defense, to give Wesley McGriff credit, I'm going to give him credit. Week after week after week after week, he comes in there Saturday after games and Monday for the press conference thing, and he answers questions. And he's yet to say what 
He could say. Wesley McGriff could say, and nobody would question the veracity of the comment. He could do the Ed Orgeron thing, and he could say, guys, I don't have the players. They know they got to keep this team playing for them for three more games, yeah. and they can't risk that being a detriment. So they have to keep this this up. And you know what, Chase? To their everlasting credit, the kids threw twenty one games. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good frame of reference. An entire bowl man period through twenty one football games. Yeah. Now they've gotten their ass kicked a few times, but through twenty one games, there's never been a game where I walked off the field and went, "Man, they did not show up today." That has not happened. Happened with Hugh Freeze. Houston. Oh, God. Happened with some Tommy Tuberville teams, and he was known for effort teams. He had some teams roll over a time or two. And if Matt coaches long enough, he'll probably have one that'll happen to him. Of course, yeah, everybody does. But to this point, it hasn't happened. Mike Bianco's had a team that didn't show up. Andy Kennedy had teams that didn't show up. Kermit Davis, as detail oriented as a coach as he is i bet if i asked him today if did you ever have one of your middle tennessee teams just one day one one game just roll the balls out there i mean i bet practice the next day was something else but that night i bet it happened it has not happened to matt yet that's a credit to the coaching staff not just matt it's a credit to phil it's a credit to wesley it is Wesley McGriff, I asked him a question the other day, Saturday. I said, you had some plays where receivers, running backs, were open, wide open. Was that that the quarterback had too much time, or was that a coverage bust? Was that linebackers getting lost in coverage, which has been a problem for them? To his credit, now it wasn't the honest answer, but to his credit, he said, no, that's on me. Put that on me. Well, I can't put it on you. You weren't out there. What happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he did. I don't feel like I'm violating a confidence here. He did come over to me afterwards and kind of explain what happened. And basically what it was was they just they gave uh, uh, Bentley. Bentley too much time. And receiver got open, and they were concentrating on the middle of the field and bled out into the flats. And if you give if you give a seven-second, you give a quarterback like Bentley seven seconds, they're going to find Somebody's open. getting open. He's going to find the open man. That was basically the answer. I don't even know how we got on here. I just my point was I think people like you and me, believe it or not, I'm I'm more this way probably as I get older. I'm more this way, period. I am cognizant of the fact that these are humans. Oh, timing is ninety nine percent of this job from a question asking standpoint. I mean, sometimes things are unavoidable, but ninety nine percent of the time it's timing. I asked Matt, you know, right, in, and I, it, people say, well, you don't ask questions. I asked Matt right away, you know, the fourth quarter, you guys were dominant for three quarters, and in the fourth quarter, it, it didn't work out. What, what, you know, you, you had seen the film, but to your best guess, what happened? It was the first question. Well, because a lot of times, and then this is something that's very relevant, fans want questions asked, but they want certain answers, and the thing media cannot do is make someone answer something a certain way. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I also it's, think it's it's done. It, okay, they gave an answer. I mean, Phil Longo said we had matchups we liked. That was his reasoning. He said we made those decisions on Wednesday. Yeah. I mean, okay. I mean, I, I don't know what to do there. You I mean, and I that's... talked about this the other day. It's funny because it's it's an appearance thing, because Longo has the the buzz cut kind of the military looking cut. I think people stereotype him at times i do i do believe this this is not a criticism of anybody but i think sometimes people look at his appearance and think he's this hard-nosed rock'em sock'em vince lombardi type neil basically said if he had my haircut he would be more he would be seen as more passive than than he's currently he'd be seen differently because i think what what longo is more than anything is kind of a and I, i don't mean this in a negative way but kind of a football nerd yeah he he likes the the chalkboard. The chalkboard. I think he. I, I I would guess that Phil Longo goes to the stuff when like he gets together with Kingsbury or or yeah. Leach or people like that. He's probably very good at these conventions and association meetings and stuff. Well, probably really gets into it. Really yeah, digs yeah. it. I'm guessing, and that's cool. I'm not. I'm not judging anybody. I'm. I'm just saying. I. I think. But. But. They have these cards, and the cards are there for a reason. The cards are so that they don't make emotional decisions. 
here's what, okay, if we get to third and five and they throw this at us, here's what I want to do. If we're second and eight, here's what I want to do. And now, obviously, score, time, all those things yeah. do require some, right. some, some, some personal, at the time, knowledge. But Right. But, and then his explanation for Corral th- th- throwing it was, look, you've covered us. You know that the backup gets just as many snaps as the starter the way that we do practice. That's what he's trained to do. He ran the play. He ran the play. He made the decision. Well, why'd you not throw short? It was covered. It was covered, so we threw deep. That's there. And now, look, is that a satisfactory yeah, answer? I, that's, that's up to you. I, that's I, for I, someone else to decide. And at the end of the day, Phil Long goes in the scoreboard business. He is. And so that, I say that to people all the time, and, and people think it's a cop-out. It's not. They're in the scoreboard business, and at some point, people at – at all these individual schools, they have to make decisions. Are you coming out with more points on the scoreboard enough times? And if you aren't, we're going to give somebody else a chance. That's the way it works. That's why sometimes I think some of the media stuff is really overplayed. Our role's really inconsequential. I said this 7,000 times. When they're winning every game, there's nothing we can do. And when they're losing every game, there's nothing we can do. The only time that I think I've impacted what happened to a coach was the Chris Porter stuff, to a degree, and the Mike Price stuff. Well, but both those are reporting things. Right. It's not games. It's and it's not like I wrote a. It's not like you had the clout to write columns and change fan opinion. Oh hell no! They go well. McCready said no. Blah, 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 I, blah, I've blah, been blah, on the old Miss beat for eleven years, and I don't have that clout. I don't know who does. Yeah. I don't impact opinion. You see the game? The games are on TV now. If you care enough, you can watch every snap. You can tape it and watch it four times back in HD. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you're not impacting opinion. No, this is – I'm hesitant to even say this because I, I don't mean me personally, just in general – I do think if it was a chance to do that, like I could pick a couple Bianco things because of all the angst around that program, and I could drill it enough to where people would be, oh, well, yeah. this is how I whatever, whatever. But if he goes to Omaha in June, okay, great. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and if they lose 47 games, okay. Like, I, I mean, what do we do? You're not going to throw a pitch. No, 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 no. I didn't I did not not hit the right fielder. I mean, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it, it – <laughs> that baseball that baseball season coming up is going to be the damnedest thing. It, it it's, it's going to be the most like angst filled and no one caring at the same time. Like I, I don't even know how to explain it. Like and then June is going to get here, and those two weeks or one week or four weeks are going oh, to be God. the most combustible things in the world. And it won't matter if they're forty and sixteen, people are going to be okay. We'll go to Omaha. And if they're thirty and twenty six, it's going to be go to Omaha. Oh, I, literally, they play fifty six regular they season do, games, yes. right? They could be fifty two and four, <laughs> and it will be yeah. Well, we're going to lose in the regional. Yeah. And there's going to be nothing that you I, can write or say. They're going to host a regional next year, and I, I can't wait till that selection day when the three seed is Troy or Stony Brook or someone, <laughs> and here we go with the snark. Yeah, oh, it's – So who's their left fielder with the 7 ERA? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Here we go. Here, here we, we go. go. Here we go. There will be some kid at the bottom of the list who's pitched an inning and, in, you know, when let's say it's Troy. Troy had a – a game in February where they played Miami and they lost twenty eight to one and that kid had an interview. and that kid was like, Hey, the coach said, So you wanted to pitch. Yeah. Take the ball. And he's out there through two innings, gave up eleven runs. Yeah. And so he has an ERA of a gazillion. And everybody's like, That that guy's getting the save. Wait and till the, Monday night. Wait till Monday night, he's gonna kill us. It's not gonna be fun to cover. It's gonna be very hard to cover. It, it's 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 yeah. Because I, I typically enjoy myself. I'm not going to enjoy last myself. season. Last season will play zero role on this season. You think? It just doesn't work that way. All right. Uh, question on the message board I want to talk about. We'll do that in a second. First, I'll tell you about Master Cuts. Christmas right around the corner, and they want to help keep your home looking up to par through the holiday season because they got a variety of outdoor decorations that will transform your house into a festive staple of the neighborhood from lighting and garland to inflatable characters 
whatever your vision is. And the best part is all the decorations you pay for, you'll own them. Master Cuts will keep and store them where you can store them yourself. The option is yours. So get a tradition started today with Master Cuts at 662-607-7773. The podcast is also brought to you by John Edwards of Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. Um, I know John's going to be in Oxford on Thursday because he's meeting with somebody about a golf trip. So here's how that works. You call John. I'll give you the number in a minute. You call John and you tell him what you're looking to do. Looking for a golf trip. Maybe you're taking your uh, your wife on a on a anniversary trip. Maybe you're taking the family on a family trip. I don't know. You're going to New York. You're going to Napa. You're going to wherever. You're going to go play golf at uh, Whispering Straits or Whistling Pines or someplace. Whatever it may be. Straits. Whatever. There too. Let him know what you want to do. Here's where we want to go, roughly. Here's how much we want to spend, roughly. Here's how long we want to go, et cetera. And what he'll do is he will use his contacts and his experience, 37 years of traveling experience. He's part of Virtuoso. It's a worldwide network of travel partners. It allows him to supply his clients with added values and unique benefits that are simply not available to other travelers. He's going to give you options, and then the rest is up to you. So give him a call, 901-494-3387, or send him an email, jedwards at regencytravel.net. First-time clients can save $50 off their first booked trip just by telling John you heard about Regency Travel on the podcast. Podcast also brought to you by Grenada Nissan. If you're in the market for a Nissan vehicle, look no further than Grenada Nissan. They have a complete selection of new and previously owned Nissan vehicles. Great deals on uh, leases as well. Had a uh, customer, had a, a, a listener actually inquire with me yesterday about Grenada Nissan and, and some stuff. So we got in touch with them. So appreciate that. It's GrenadaNissanUSA.com. Gene and Sandy have been friends of this site, friends of this podcast for a long time. And uh, they'll take care of you. It's GrenadaNissanUSA.com. Also brought to you by Harry Alexander. Harry is an Oxford-based REMAX legacy realty agent. Harry's been in Oxford uh, more than four decades. No one knows the residential and condo market in Oxford better than Harry. Go to his site. He'll prove it to you. It's HarryAlexander.com. Click on the Properties and Neighborhoods tab. Filter through by what you're looking for. And then send him an email. It's HA at HarryAlexander.com. Before I do this, was there anything uh, relevant out of practice last night that was actually newsworthy? I know we're 45 minutes in, but I just now even thought about it. Oh, uh, no. Good enough. Just curious. No. Yeah, I mean. Notebook's there. Go read it, rebelgrove.com. Yeah, there is a, a notebook. Um, Elijah Moore talked about, you know, his decision to not – to stick with Georgia and to go to Ole Miss, and it's worked out. And he's happy. And, uh, Kadir Shepard talked about the uh, Academy Award that he's up for after his performance in Little Rock. He own it. Yeah, well, he just said that earlier in the game he'd gotten a 15-yard penalty for doing something to the quarterback, I guess, and that he said the guy hit me. I wanted to make sure they knew it. So got a little. It was. It was. Well, it was the second flop that wins the award. The first flop was just funny. The second flop was hilarious. Yeah, you went from like NBA superstar <laughs> to EPL athlete at that point yeah. with the second one. Where yeah, that wasn't a flop. That was a. Complete... I think that's my problem with soccer is I can't respect the flopping. I really think that's my overall issue with the sport more yeah. than anything. Well, when else. the guy goes down and he just looks like he's dead, and then he hops back up, once <laughs> and then they he's come sprinting, whatever. running twenty eight miles an hour. Yeah, and yeah. A minute later, it's like. Man. I wish I was ever that hurt in my life. Your body must really recover fast. Stupid. All right, this this got a lot of uh, traction on the message board yesterday. Okay. I responded a couple times. I don't know if you did or not. I'm not sure what you're talking uh, about. Yet. Oxonian Reb puts a poll up on the message board yesterday. Did you see this? I'm not sure. You didn't see this? All right. Next 12 months in Ole Miss Athletics. Oh, I did see this. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Next 12 months in Ole Miss Athletics. you got to pick one that's best for whatever. It can be however you want to phrase that. Okay. But whichever two you don't choose are not going to happen. Got me? They're not going to happen. Not going to happen. Not that you just play it out, that they're not happening. Okay. Okay. So you only get one. Okay. Your options are in the spring, speaking of, or sorry, let's start here. The Ole Miss basketball team in year one under Kermit Davis makes the NCAA tournament. Okay. That's all I got. I don't know if they're winning. I don't know if it's a play in game. Well, that would I don't mean know that if they're going to the final four. But that would mean that they either won the SEC tournament or they won 
12 games in the regular season in the league. In this league, you don't need 12. But yeah, 11. Enough. 10 yeah. to 11. Yeah. All right. Would have had one hell of a year. Yeah, they make the tournament. They're in the field of 68. That's all I got. Gotcha. Okay. Ole Miss baseball makes the College World Series in the spring. Okay. In the summer. I don't okay. know if they win it. I don't know. They go to Omaha. Well, if they don't win it, I'm firing Bianco. Okay. Ole Miss football is bowl eligible in 2019. So they win six or more six games. Six or more games. Okay. I can start. You can start. What, 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 what's the first thing that comes to your head? So the first thing that comes to my head is that Kermit making the tournament would be a good thing, but I don't know that it changes the landscape of the athletic program in year one. Also depends on how you do it. That's what so much of this is from a question standpoint, because it's there's so much else. Well, yeah, if they go fourteen and four in the league and they're a five seed in year one with that team, people are going, "Holy cow!" At which point, I will say, I'll go over there and go, "Coach," because I'm gonna call you coach because you must be damn good at it. <laughs> yeah. My first question will be, "How is it that you never got another gig?" Yeah. No disrespect, but goodness gracious. Um, yeah, th that's different than hey, they got hot four days and won the SEC tournament after yeah. they were seven and whatever in the league. Yeah, which would be a really cool story for a weekend, but I don't know that. It yeah, you get thumped by somebody in the first round and whatever. Okay, it really comes down to the other two for me. Basketball, I kind of throw out without the thing you're talking about, or and again, I don't think it, it does not work this way. But I did leave out the caveat: is that in basketball, one player is so important. Could that, for some reason, lead to some superstar in a signing class? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. something along those lines. Yeah. Because one player is a lot more impactful in basketball than anything else. Yeah. So I grew, I grew up in Ruston. Something? I can prove yeah. it. All right. The other two, and I, I really thought about this for a while. I, I kind of sit there. I, I had somebody working on something in my house, and the whole time they were there, I'm just kind of sitting here staring at my computer thinking okay. about this. I chose baseball. And everybody's rolling their eyes because of me. But, no, I, I, had, I had some thought to this. First off, Ole Miss has been through hell as, an, as a fan base. And call it what you want, a very large percentage of the Ole Miss fan base puts a lot of emotional capital into that baseball program. Not, a, not yeah. At Ole Miss, it is not a niche sport. We've said this before. Um, people ask us all the time, what are y'all's podcast numbers? Yeah. Well, the truth is they're steady. Yeah, they don't move. They, really. they, they, they go up a little. We might dip a little. Yeah. But they're, they're basically the same. Except for about three days after Tennessee Tech. in June, yeah, where they plummeted, yeah, and we thought, "Oh damn!" I mean, you you were pulling out the defibrillator at that point. It was I was a little I, get, I was getting concerned. I thought, "What in the world, man? What happened?" So we got all summer. So yeah, Ole Miss fans need to feel nationally competitive at something. They need to feel a morale boost. They need something positive to happen. And I think getting back to the College World Series, you're elite at a fairly major sport. You're on television on ESPN in June competing for a title. It means you had a heck of a regular season to some extent, no matter what. They need that. And I think that's more important because I said, look, it depends on what we're talking about here. To me, that's more important than just the bottom line bowl game. In, in, in the fall, because if we're talking now eight and four or better, oh, never mind, go eight and four or better and change your football program. Yeah. Not, not a thought there. Yeah. But let's just play this out. Six and six, there's even different versions of six and six. Let's say it's just six and six and you're going to Birmingham or Shreveport, okay? Okay. And it's not a recruiting class set up like it was set up in 12 to 13 where it was, hey, you really need six wins because this has got to move for this. I don't see that kind of thing happening. Right. I mean, they might sound a good class, but not like that. Not the exact right. same I, I way. I know what you're saying. So, six and six where, let's say you get hot early. You beat Cal, beat Memphis, beat Arkansas, beat Vanderbilt, five and one. Okay. I think it's five and one if you do that. Alabama's one loss. And you beat, like, Missouri. You don't think they can go to Tuscaloosa? I don't way? feel okay. confident about okay. that. Okay. Then you beat Missouri. But then you lose five in a row to finish the year. Six could and six. It, could happen. Yeah, could happen. I mean, probably not, but sure, whatever. So that's six and six. That's a Shreveport game, and that's not a lot of momentum. Recruits aren't going to base their decision from five and seven to six and six because you went to Shreveport. And I could argue that, let's say, Matt Corral takes a little while to get going next year. They lose to Memphis. 
they lose to Cal. They lose to Arkansas. And they're one in four or whatever. Why why are you so hateful? I got a point. Matt Corral figures it out. They, okay. They beat Mandy. Okay. They beat Missouri. Okay. They beat LSU. Wow. And beat Mississippi State. That'd be a big finish. That's five and seven. There's a hell of a lot more momentum at five and seven than six and six. Here's I, look. First of all, what I'm about to do is devil's advocate because I agree with you about baseball. If you're going to pick something this one year, I would say baseball. They need a. Yeah, that would warm. That would cheer people up. It would make people feel good. Um, if that team got to Omaha, it would. It would. It would relax. And a trip to Birmingham is not changing the athletic department. Right. Right. Um. Just playing devil's advocate. Sure. Just for the sake of having a conversation. Yeah, that's fine. Because I, I agree with you. On the record, I agree. Okay. Here's devil's advocate. So if you tell me that's going to happen and the others aren't, well, Kermit not making the NCAA tournament this year is not a big deal. Anybody who makes that a big deal, man, yeah, go get a massage. So really, that's just status quo. Yeah. I mean, that's go get a I mean. massage. Seriously, calm down. Not an Asian massage, a massage. Cold shower. Yeah. If you tell me the baseball team's going to Omaha and I that means the football team goes five and seven or worse, my only concern at that point gets into attendance. Well, so we don't I'm, know it's five and seven. No, but too, if, that's if, the thing. If too. you're not going six and six, you're going five and seven or worse. Right. So my concern at that point, if I'm thinking it out, would be okay, so let's take your scenario and they lose to Memphis. They come home and they lose to Arkansas, and then lose to Cal. Lose to Cal, and now people just, you're one in three headed to Alabama or whatever yeah, it is you're doing, and you're probably not winning in Tuscaloosa, and so people get the pitchforks out at that point. That's a good point. And they start the thing where they go, you know what? I'm not coming. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not coming. I'm done. I am done. I want this coach fired. I want everybody fired. I want the people who hired them fired. I want everybody fired. And that's it. Nope, and, I'm done. And a, sway, and, a, and a banner at Swayze is not fixing how they feel about football in late September. Right. And so all of a sudden you're into October and two months of a season left and it's tumultuous and you're losing money at the gate and you're losing money in gifting. I don't know. But what happens if you start really fast and then lose five in a row? Right. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm just that's what I said. I said I was playing yeah. devil's advocate. Oh, I, know. I mean, I don't because then he starts getting compared to Cutcliffe for some of Cutcliffe's right. late season failures and different things, right. and it becomes a yeah. I mean, I, it's without knowing how it falls, you don't. There's yeah. no way you, it's, it makes it a great discussion. I don't know how long in my scenario, which is not what I'm predicting, by the way. It's just a hypothetical. Yeah, we're just talking. In my scenario, I don't know how long the afterglow of Omaha would carry you through the football season. Yeah, because that's what's funny about that 14 thing is, I mean, we were doing really well business-wise, but I don't think anybody realized what kind of short-term golden era they had going right there because that's a basketball team that's starting in 13. It makes the NCAA tournament two out of three years, two out of four years, or whatever that was. I don't even remember now. Two out of three? Two out of three. Yeah, two out of three. So, I mean, they had a – calendar year basically there of hey NCAA baseball basketball tournament or Omaha Access Bowl NCAA basketball tournament and won a game Access Bowl won a game yeah yeah in both tournaments won a game yeah had the big comeback in one of them beat yeah. Wisconsin in the other one and the people that say that the Brigham beat BYU game was not an NCAA tournament game I was there it was they said it was the NCAA tournament and the floor had NCAA on it it was an NCAA tournament game all the teams wore the little patch yeah. it was an NCAA tournament stop yeah your baseball team finished third in the country you went to two access bowls and two out of three NCAA basketball tournaments yeah it's pretty good that's not bad pretty heady stuff yeah and then it then then draft night happened <laughs> And things happen. That's like my question. Somebody asked me from an Ole Miss fan standpoint if you could change something. But they said other than draft and night. And I said other than draft night. Did you see my answer? Uh, Hugh Freeze, Lindsey Miller. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, th I think even – is it – That press release did more damage. It did, but don't you just take away the Lindsey Miller-Lamry-Hunzel fight? Yeah, I, I guess mean, so. Because that – yeah. Or that, all, that keeps the TMZ black eye thing out of there, which is still one of like our top five podcasts of all time. <laughs> Thank you guys, by the way. But I mean that that does a lot of stuff if you take that out. So that courtroom was great. 
wearing the red football player knee brace. <laughs> it's the best part of the whole deal. Is he's got Laramie's football knee brace on. I was so enjoying that hearing, and then the little boy started crying, and I immediately just said, oh, man, I feel like crap. I would not have wanted to be the bailiff in that courtroom. Having to keep the stern face and act like you're doing your job for that. Because <laughs> I turned and looked at him and smiled. <laughs> he looked at me like, you, you smile again, I'm going to arrest you. Because he was trying not to laugh. I still to this day think <laughs> Faris went for the straight for the comedy of it. Like, there was no reason for him to go. No. I think he said, hey, I can't miss this. I'll, I'll handle it. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll head down there. You know how you watch a football game and it's like 77 to nothing in the third yeah, quarter? Yeah. And you can tell the coach that has the 77 is starting to feel bad about it. Just a little. I mean, he's glad that he has the yeah, 77 yeah, yeah. and not the nothing, but he's starting to go. Let's stop. Yeah, we, we really we really should stop. And he's yelling at his offensive coordinator. I, I'm telling you, do not score. And the offensive co- but you can't kneel it. And the offensive coordinator's like, it's when Blake Sims ran for the touchdown against Ole Miss or whatever it and was. Saban went and yelled at McElwain. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was McElwain. Whoever it was at the time, he's yelled at him, and you could tell him going, you could see because I used your binoculars, and he was telling Saban, "I'm running the same play over and over. We're just running. We're it's just dives. Yes, sir, but I don't know what else to do." Do you want to kneel? No? Okay, then. What do yeah. you want me to do? Saban was really frustrated. It was as worked up as I've seen him on a sideline. Um, yeah, Faris wanted to. Uh, he wouldn't have been as frustrated had the wins for Ole Miss happened earlier in the, in the tenure than that. Probably not. No, I don't think so. But he and Houston were buddies. Yeah. He didn't like running it up on Houston. All right, so one last point of thing to talk about. Um. News came out yesterday. We'll talk about this in Graves Pod in the South. Jay Tate reported, talked to Alan Green. Alan Green said that Gus Malzahn will be the coach at Auburn in 2019. It has led to some widespread speculation that Hugh Freeze will be the offensive coordinator at Auburn in 2019. I'll ask you what I asked Ryan Brown last night when I was guest hosting the Gary Perry show. Do you believe that happens? If it does, how do you think he'll do? And and what do you think Greg Sankey's reaction will be? Before I give you that answer, I'll tell you about Community Mortgage, Oxford, Memphis, Soto County, and Chattanooga. Underwriting processing in Memphis are getting local underwriting. Understand your, mar- your market, a leader in condo financing, and the float down option. So contact Jason at 662-234-2704 or J-Lo, J-L-O-W-E at communitymtg.com. Also, the podcast is brought to you in part by GNM Pharmacy on South Lamar in Oxford. Go in, get that flu shot. I probably should have at some point. Probably might do that today. If you have a major medical or insurance provider, it is free. If not, $25. Walk-ins are welcome. And if you use them for all your pharmaceutical needs, they deliver local in the Oxford area. That's GNM Pharmacy on South Lamar. Podcast also brought to you by Oxford University Bank. OUB, locally owned and operated right here in Oxford. When you deposit money at OUB, that money and the vast majority of the bank's profits go right back into the Oxford community. OUB gives you the comfort of home, all the benefits the big mega banks provide, all the technology and products you can want, all with a personal touch. When you call OUB, you speak directly with a live person, all without having to press 10 buttons, without a five-minute wait. OUB offers its customers the absolute best cash checking account. It's called Casasa, and with Casasa, OUB will pay customers 2.5% interest on their balances up to $50,000. And with Casasa, ATM fees nationwide are refunded. OUB also offers online bill pay and mobile check deposit using its online app. To learn more about OUB, check out LiveOxford, BankOxford.com, or call 662-234-6668. OUB is FDIC insured. Uh, Megan Phillips with LAH Real Estate is the person to call for all your real estate needs in the Birmingham area. With almost a decade of experience, Megan's knowledge and expertise can help you buy or sell your home today. So visit our website, MeganMPhillips.com. That's M-E-A-G-A-N-M-Phillips.com. Or call Megan at 205-602-7929. Again, 205-602-7929. Don't forget Ole Miss uh, Basketball. 3 o'clock on Saturday against Western Michigan. It's the start, the official start, I should say, of the Kermit Davis era. Uh, tickets can be purchased at OleMissTicks.com. You can get Ole Miss men's basketball season tickets with their Flex Pass, $199 for 16 games, 
And the women's season, which began last night, you can get season tickets for just $50. All of that at OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Let me take it from back, from the, the end of the beginning. I don't think Greg Sankey and the SEC will be as direct with stopping it after one season. I, I think that was in some ways uh, – I think Hugh Freeze got a, an indirect one-year show calls with the SEC, in my opinion. I also agree with something Ryan Brown said to me yesterday. He said he thinks that some of this was Sankey wanted Ole Miss's process to be over before Freeze returned. It's fair. Um, look, is it going to happen or not? I have no idea. Um, I haven't heard anything. I haven't really tried to hear anything. Um, I haven't talked to Hugh in a while. Um, I haven't seen him in a while. Um. He'll do fine if he gets it. He'll do okay. It, but here are two things. Okay. Because I have a question. Okay. He and Gus can look like the same offensively, but they're not necess- – they don't have the same tendencies, though. Who's running this thing? What's he doing? I mean, I Hugh, Hugh doesn't strike me as the guy that wants to just concede and say yes, sir, to Gus Malzahn 24 hours a day whatsoever. Agreed. I mean, I, I think – I, I think Freeze, I mean, I would tell him this. He'd be better served being an OC outside of this area. Go somewhere else for a couple of years and do something Agreed. else. Two two questions. Yeah. And I mean both of these. They're going to sound like I'm trying to dig something up. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not. I'm literally getting your opinion. Okay. I think Hugh Freeze can go be an offensive coordinator in the SEC – as long as he limits his recruiting to on campus. When a kid comes in for a visit, he's part of the deal. But nobody's going to give him a job where he's strictly on campus. I think if Hugh Freeze becomes the hitting the road in the on the in the living rooms recruiter, I think some stuff leaks because humans are that way. Well, I says but that's I didn't know exactly where you're going, but I did have that thought because look the how many ever phone calls and stuff that Pat Forty and who's and whomever. Um, I guess Same Steve, as Robertson, yeah. Steve Robertson. I'm already starting to lose it a little bit. Well, Forty sticks out because that was the one where he had like the website where you literally saw like the menu and stuff. It was like, ooh, like it was kind of skin crawling. Um, You're not talking about like sweet and sour chicken. You're talking about something else. Moving on. Um, Mongolian beef. Uh, that wasn't all of them. There's no way. I mean, come on. We've we've heard. We know things. Port um, a la orange. Heard a lot of stuff. So yeah, there's still stuff out there, and that's got to be scary for any athletic program. Because look, I don't. I, I'm not saying Ross or Michael or Matt or whomever would do that. But I'll tell you, if I'm a representative of Ole Miss's interest. And Hugh Freeze suddenly becomes this Mississippi recruiter. You have a really hard time not just all of a sudden some things popping up and coming out and going, hey, I I don't know. I, I don't know how that got out, but it did. Dangest thing. I mean, hmm. it's humans. It, it, it's humans, and it is a billion-dollar business. I agree completely. I mean, that would scare my, – my point being, whether or not that happens – if I'm the AD, if I'm Alan Green, if I'm Gus Malzahn, if I'm Barry Odom, if I'm whomever, I'm scared to death about that, about, about the unknown of what else is there and how does that happen because – And Ryan Brown brought up a really I good – I don't think the recruiting thing's even a problem. I just think the next thing, the more, is the problem. Ryan Brown brought up a really good point. Yeah. And if you've lived in Alabama for any length of time, you know this to be true. And, look, a lot of you are going to roll your eyes at this, and I rolled my eyes at it for six years when I covered them, so it's cool. But understand what I'm telling you is fact. Auburn, unlike a lot of schools, is really hung up on family, um, on we do it a certain way. We win and we win in a certain way. And we, frankly, are better. You can roll your eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, oh, I'm saying you can roll your eyes. I rolled my eyes for six years. It doesn't mean, but it doesn't change the fact that there's a group of people there, influential group of people there, a big group of people there, a lot of people there. Hell, all the people there. They think they're better than you. 
They do it better. They're classier. There's an Auburn way. There's an Auburn creed, all that stuff. It's true. Yeah. So you bring in this guy, and if there's something else, you're going to have a hard time being accepted. And here's my next question. What happens to Hugh Freeze's Twitter account when he's the offensive coordinator at Auburn? Because if you look at Gus Malzahn's Twitter account, it's basically just every so often, boom, which means we got a kid. Which is the Somebody else is running the stupid thing. Of course. And, hey, congratulations to Bruce Pearl and the Tigers or yeah. whatever. He does not do it for – Giddy up, the equestrian team won the national title. He, he does not do it to affect change no, in society. No, it's not for him at all. No, no, no. It's literally we're going to announce a – Some focus group told him he ought to at least have a present, so he has a present. Uh, Cam Newton wins the NFL MVP, and he says congratulations, yeah, 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 War, yeah. War Eagle. Just your standard – your standard Twitter feed. Yeah. Does Hugh Freeze have a standard Twitter feed, or does he still continue to first Ecclesiastes 8, 13? And I'm just making up a Bible verse. I have no idea what that says. I need to look it up now before we run the podcast probably. But, no, you um, don't. It's cool. What, 8, 13? That's what I said. Is there even? I have no idea. Like there, okay. Um, you know, I'll, I mean, John three sixteen. We all know what that one says. I mean, are, we, are, are is he quoting Bible verses all the time? Is he doing all that stuff, or is he just saying, "Hey"? Strictly because of how that would be received from everyone, frankly. Uh huh. I if I were a coach, I would have a, a a restriction on it. I would too. Yeah. Would he accept that restriction? Does he want to coach that bad? At some point, you got to. If, if if this is your profession, you got to make yeah. sacrifices and exceptions. In my opinion. It'd be fascinating. I'll say that. It'd be a fascinating storyline. He's currently the OC for that other thing. The Arizona Hot Shots. Hot Shots. Yeah. Got a feeling he'd get out of that contract if he needed to. I would think. Jimmy's still the agent? To my knowledge. Okay. By the way, he talked about it with us on the show. Uh, somebody told me Isaac Gross did get picked up by one of those teams. So oh, good. He's got a training camp invite or something. Good. So congrats to uh, yeah, absolutely to uh, to Isaac on that. I kind of forgot about that. But anyway. Probably as a result of he, he saw my arms and he said, I've got to start working out a little more. And then as I thing told you, know. you the, uh, the negative to these shows at Funkies is other than a couple different ones throughout the year, we take pictures with college or professional athletes that make us look even worse than we normally look. Yeah. Like Aaron Barrett, I felt okay about myself that day. And then I saw that picture, and I no longer felt all that okay about myself. Of course, he pitches in the major leagues. He does. You ride a Peloton. I do. I do. I finished 50th out of 400 and something today. I was pleased. That's a little low for you, isn't it? You? Uh, I, was a little, I was a little leg weary. Okay. It was my 202nd ride, which is not as exciting as your 200th ride. I did really well the on my adrenaline's a little low. Yeah, I did really well on my two hundredth ride because I got a, a big shout out. Yep. God in heaven. All right, rebelgrove dot com. Plenty there. Emma Lovewell. She she spoke to me for like ten seconds. It you was great. The, you ever seen, you've seen the movie Her, right? Her. Yeah. No, Her. I've never seen that. You probably should. And then see Emma's real. Then see a doctor after that. Is Emma's a, real. She's a, a like real a person. Psychiatric kind. She's um, a real person. All right, rebelgrove.com, plenty there. Snap counts, Nils Mailbag, and much more. Be back tomorrow with Andy Kennedy. So uh, come in for that one. We'll talk to you then.